Jennifer Khan, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. <laughs> you sound like you have a cold. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, I missed you the last couple of classes. I saw you in the classroom. Or the Actually, site. <laughs> yesterday I was going to join your class, but you haven't been there, and I, I thought you fell asleep, so I left the class, and you came back. Oh, <laughs> yeah, what had happened <clears throat> is there was this terrible echo I was getting, and, and sometimes it's my own machine that does that, so I pull out and jump back in, uh, and sometimes I can't get back in quickly enough, uh, but it should have been fine. Um, Okay, your beard is getting more full. I see that. That's good. <laughs> and, uh, well, well, good, good. I just got back from the dentist, and I found lots of things that I didn't want to know. Um, let's see. So, Mustafa, you put the hangout up? Good? All right. Let's see. I think we're full. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hello. All right. All the usual suspects. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, all right. So, hi, everybody. I'm glad to have you all here. I think hi. I know most of you. Let's see. Yes, um, Alfredo, I see, good to see you. Gary, good to see you. Hi, Gary. And uh, let's see. Furkan, as always, good to see you. Um, Manel, I have never seen you, but you have some nice pictures. <laughs> uh, Monica, have we met? No? No? Well, it's a pleasure. Hi, Monica. I'm Kevin. Um, I'll be teaching this class, and it's very good to have you. Where do you live, Monica? Hey, I live in Spain. You live in Spain? Yes. Very good. Very good. Well, be welcome. Where Where in Spain do you live? What part? Uh, in the north of Spain, in Valencia. In uh, which, I'm sorry, Parenthia? Parenthia with P. P, Parenthia. Very good. Yes. Well, welcome. Welcome. All righty. Mustafa, how are you? Fine. How are you, teacher? I am doing very well. Very well. Servette, how are you? Good, thanks. Good. And good to see you as always. And Stanislav, good to see you again. Hi. Hi. All right. Um, reading class, uh, the subject, and then we'll do like I usually do, is I'll ask us to read. And I try and read instead of just for vocabulary. Uh, we look for reading for fluency, which means the individual syntax and words don't matter so much to me as understanding what's being read and what is being said, so you can actually read and enjoy it. Uh, we will read, and that's important. Uh, we will also ask about any vocabulary words or meanings that you don't know. Um, my experience has been the more that you actually read and do things, the better you become at, at your vocabulary. And I think we just lost Gotti. Two, three, four, five. Oh, now she's back again. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, before I start, what questions do you have, if any? And am I speaking too quickly? I think it's good. I'm good? OK. Yeah. I, I'm a little hyper. I got back home from the dentist about 20 minutes ago. and. Um, I found out they're going to have to do lots of things to my mouth, and I don't like it. <laughs> but, you know, it's either that or lose all my teeth like I've lost all my hair. And, you know, I don't want artificial teeth, and I don't want artificial hair. <laughs> That's the way it goes. All right. This class is on uh, linguistics, and there, there's a few words that I'm not even going to bother going over, uh, except to say here they are. And it, it'll be much more easy to simply start reading and discussing as we go. So let's see. Who would I like to ask to start? Um, let's see. How about Servette? Could you start, please? This very first paragraph. Yes. Can non-humans use language? Not humans. Non-humans? Non-humans, yeah. yeah. We're talking about, well, you'll figure it out. Go ahead. Non-humans. Sound linguists say that it's the ability of humans to acquire and use language that differentiates them from all other animals. Yet, other animals too use symbols to communicate. Bees perform a dance that tells other bees where they found sources of nectar. The grunts and gestures of chimpanzees 
signify varying desires and emotions. These forms of communication do not necessarily have the grammatical characteristic of language. However, notwithstanding these obvious differences, some experts have devoted many years of their careers to ongoing studies of the linguistic capabilities of animals. Very good. Okay, now, if you are going to tell me in one or two sentences what this paragraph is about, what would you tell me? Because you're going to. Yes, uh, it, it's about the communication uh, between animals, not humans. It says like humans also use different type of communication systems as humans, but it's not like the human language. Okay, so you're saying that, uh, let me rephrase what you said or paraphrase, that animals communicate but it's not the same way humans communicate. Yes. How is it different? How is it different? Mm -hmm. I think they say they don't have a grammatical structure as we, as we have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, let's take a look at some of the words. Are there any words starting with, with you, sir, that, that you do not know? Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding. Um, that means in spite of that. Um, even though there are differences, we are ignoring them. <laughs> That's what it boils down to. We know they're there, but we're ignoring it. That's what it means. Yeah, okay. Um, no other things. Okay. Nothing, nothing else? Okay. Well, let's work our way around. Um, Stanislav, how about you? Stanislav, are you there? Hello? Hello. Uh, yes. Hello, teacher. I, I have to... Well, two things uh, to add I don't, uh, I don't see the chat. You what? Okay, I've got two people talking at once. I don't see the chat box. You don't see the chat box? Hang on just a sec. Now, in the chat box, that one's easy. Look at your uh, the left-hand side, and you see the Kalingo button? where it says CO, CO, click on that. Yes. yes. And that, that should give you the chat box. Do you see? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. W oh. would, you send the, would you send the link of the article? Because um, I can't see it clearly. I cannot send the link. Um, I did bring up the uh, the picture a little bit bigger. Okay. Yeah. Is that better for you? I mean, I, I can't send the link. It's just a, it's a copyright issue. I can use it to teach, but I can't send it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, that's about as high as I can get it. Uh, now, Stanislav, did you have a question, sir? Uh, I have to read the next paragraph? Or? No, no, I was asking if there were any of the words oh. in this first paragraph. Okay, uh, I haven't any questions. Any of those? No, I don't have no? any questions. Please. Okay, good, good. Um, Alfredo? No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay. okay. Uh, Gadi, anything? Any questions, Gadi? Uh, I think acquire. Uh, does it mean uh, weird or acquire? First line. <laughs> Acquired means to gather. Uh, what line was that again? Oh, the first line. A C Q U I. Yeah, to to gather, to get. Um, to gather. Yes. In other words, I uh, am working, and when I'm working, I make money. I acquire money. I get. Um, when uh -huh. you are talking uh -huh. with us, yeah, you lang acquire language. Understand? Okay. I understand. Yes. Okay. Um, any others? Remember, if you don't know, somebody else doesn't all as well. You're just braver. Is that all, Gotti? Gotti? Okay, for Khan. No, no problem. No. Okay. Alrighty, Manel? No. no nope. Problem. Okay, Monica? No. Very good. And Mustafa? No, no problem. Okay, great. 
Now, uh, Stanislav, could you read this next paragraph, please? Okay. Uh, over the last 40 years, several researchers have asserted that non-humans can master language. Chimpanzees and gorillas have been the most popular targets of study because at maturity they are estimated to have the intelligence of two or three year old children who are usually well on their way to learning language. Dolphins too have been studied because they have a complex communication system and exceptionally large brains relative to their body size. It would seem that if this, these animals were unable to learn English, uh, to learn language, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> their general intelligence could not be blamed. Instead, failure would be... You there? Done stuff? Yeah. Okay. I, I have some troubles with my microphone. Not a problem. Of, of, uh, of uh, a genetic makeup that permits language learning. Okay. All right. Now tell me, please, what in two or three sentences, what is this paragraph saying? Mm. Mm. Animals. Uh, can't learn uh, any language because they don't have uh, intelligence or they have intelligence of two or three year old children. Now, is that what they're saying there? That they can't do it? Or that if you're asserting, if you're asserting, you're suggesting very strongly that non-humans can master language. Uh, for example, because they're as smart as two or three-year-old children, chimpanzees and gorillas might be able to learn. Did, did you see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, they can learn in uh, language, but uh, not, not as uh, human. Possibly, yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yes. Okay. Does anyone else have other thoughts about that paragraph? Okay, Stanislav, any words that you would like clarified? Instead. Instead? Instead. What, uh, what line? Yeah, the, the, the last. Uh, the oh, last okay, sentence. right there. Instead, failure. Um, rather than. So it says, when it says here, it would seem that if these animals were unable to learn language, intelligence could not be blamed. Instead, that is, the real reason uh, of failure would be the fault of the way their genetics are. So it's not intelligence, it's something else in the way they are made. And that's what instead means. On the other hand, for another reason. Okay? Okay. Anything else? Mm. But uh, actually, here, here are many words for me, hard. Oh yeah, well good, that's why you're here. Go ahead. Um, estimated. Estimated. That is to guess. <laughs> it's an intelligent guess. Um, to give you an example, I have um, my coffee cup and, in fact, here, I'm going to... Um, bring up this so you can see. So I have a coffee cup. I know it holds eight ounces and it's filled up to about here. Mm -hmm. So I estimate I have about six ounces. I don't know for sure, but it's a smart guess. That's an mm -hmm. estimate. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. It's a smart guess. All right, let's go back. Mm -hmm. I think it's all. I think okay. What is maturity? Maturity. No, I don't know. <laughs> Mat <laughs> Would anyone like to help? We're up. We're up. What? 
growing up. Growing up. It's like something. Grown up. Grown up. Okay. Okay. Yes. Someone has grown up. Someone is mature. They have aged and increased in wisdom. That's maturity. But so teacher, maturity is also like when fruit is grown, so we can eat it. Same idea. Yes, it has reached a certain level of of age. It is of age. Kevin. Okay. Yes. I see. I see. Maturity is a is a key in this paragraph. Very much. Yes. Yeah. Because because parrot can make words, but it's for for for, for no not for maturity. Uh, it's for a reputation or it's, for, it's, for learning, yeah, but not for maturity. Yeah, yeah. Whereas somebody like a, a gorilla or a chimp, at maturity, when they have become full adults, do have the ability to reason and possibly mimic speech. We don't know for sure. Um, all right, so uh, Stanislav, you understand maturity? Yeah. What okay. does it, what does mean genetic make? Uh, okay. Genetic makeup. Do you know? You know what a cell is, right? Mm -hmm. Within the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me let me go back out. Within the cell, there are little things, little pieces of information that tell the cells what to grow into. Those are the genes. Okay. So your genetic makeup talks about the way your body is programmed to be. Uh, for example, my genetic makeup says that I have kind of a round head, no hair, uh, blue eyes, and I can grow facial hair, but only here. That's that's what my body says. Somebody like, uh, you look at Furkan's picture, <laughs> you see that Furkan has dark eyes. Um, if he took his hat off, you would see he has a full head of hair. And you would also see that his beard runs all the way up to his ears and around, <laughs> although the mustache is a little scraggly. So genetic makeup uh, describes our, um, our view? It's, it's not just how you look, but it's, it's all of what you are. Uh, it's the way your brain works. It's the way your lungs work. It's the way you have the ability to reason. In other words, um, when we go back to uh, Alfredo's um, description of the parrot, the parrot has the physical ability to mimic, that is, copy sound, but it does not have the genetic ability to understand what those sounds mean to us, as far as we know. Mm -hmm. it, it's what their biology says they are. That's their genetic makeup, what, what the building blocks say you are. You see? Okay. I have a question. Uh, okay, we've got a couple. Go ahead, Servette, and then I think we had another one. Go ahead, Servette. Does, does a noun maturity include uh, the being like old ages, or just is it? Uh, it refers to the ages between childhood and being old, old ages. And well, it depends on what you're talking about. Generally, the more something matures, the older it gets. But the but so the connotation means to reach, uh, you know, to to continue to age and grow. The the denotation dictionary definition is just to get older, to become more and more and more mature. That would be old age. Uh, but we generally associate maturity with intelligence and wisdom and common sense, not necessarily with aging. Uh, okay. Now, was there someone else who had a question? Nobody? I heard a voice. Okay, Stanislav, anything else? No, thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm hearing somebody else's voice in here somewhere. All right. Uh, we lost uh, We lost uh, Gary, but we have Herman. All right, let's go to Alfredo. This next paragraph, please. Okay. The question of whether no human mammals can learn to use language language is not a simple one for at least two reasons. First, language is more than just communication, but defining just when animals are, are exhibiting, 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 uh, yeah, that something more 
is a sore source of debate. What seems to differentiate human language from the gesture, grounds, chirp, whistle, or cries of other animals is in grammar or formal set of rule for combining words. Also, because of their anatomical structure, non-human mammals will never be able to speak in the same way to the same way that humans do, do do. Do right, right. To test this animal's ability to learn language, investigators therefore must devise innovative, innovative, innovative way they, for yes. them of to communicate. For them to communicate. So, uh, if you are going to tell me, Alfredo, what this paragraph is saying. What would you tell me? Yeah. <laughs> I was reading, but I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the disadvantage of being the person reading. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what, because again, we're, we're going for fluency uh, as opposed to just the words. So let me read it. Just follow and, and, and listen, and, but, and don't worry about individual words. Worry about meaning. The question of whether non-human mammals can learn to use language is not a simple one. And we're getting a feedback. Harman, hang on a second, my friend. Okay, that's better. And where was I? Yes, the question of whether non-human mammals can learn to use language is not a simple one for at least two reasons. First, language is more than just communication, but defining just when animals are exhibiting set something more is a source of debate. What seems to differentiate human language from the gestures, grunts, chirps, whistles, or cries of other animals is grammar, a formal set of rules for combining words. Also, because of their anatomical structures, non-human mammals will never be able to speak in the same way that humans do. To test these animals' abilities, ability to learn language, investigators therefore must devise innovative ways for them to communicate. Okay, okay. I've read that. Okay, uh, the researchers uh, put apart uh, the anatomic, uh, anatomic anatomical anatomic uh, way to the anatomic system that um, made two animals unable to speak. They send, they uh, go, they focus the, the, the investigation at the, at the meaning of the gesture, uh, ground, uh, in order to communicate between two different animals or two different uh, uh, peoples. Okay. Now, let's, um, let's take a look at some of the words in here. Do you know what grammar is? Grammar, grammar is grammar. Uh, is, uh, is, is uh, uh, the the system that makes sense to the communication. Very good. Uh, the rules. <laughs> yeah, the rules. Okay. The rules all play by. Yeah. Animal can uh, animal can make a rule for now. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, that's that's the thing. Do animals yeah. have grammar? And that's what they're wondering about. Maybe, 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 maybe uh, in between animals, there are some grammar that they understand, but we didn't. Yeah. Uh, and and so how do they? Well, there's no. We don't talk about the testing yet. And I'm still getting feedback. All right. Okay. Good. Um, words that you don't or or would like to have clarified from this paragraph, uh, Alfredo. Anything? It, they, they want to clarify that. The, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm asking you if there's any word in here that you would like a better uh, no, understanding. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I understand the, the whole word. Okay. I'm going to ask around then to see if anyone else would, would, uh, would like some clarification. Uh, Hernan? Do you understand the word, Hernan? Tell me, teacher. Yes. Hernan, we had some words that uh, Alfredo was reading. Um, well, uh, the, 
do you do you want to read? Not yet. I want to know. Well, Ernan, we've got some. Why? What's the noise back there? Can Can you hear me, teacher? Can you hear me? Uh, Ernan, I'm hearing too many loud noises, like traffic or um, something like that. What's going on back there? Oh, unmute yourself. Can you hear me, teacher? I can, can now. I'm hearing very loud noise. What is back there? Now, now, now if you can hear me. Listen to me. Please listen to me. I can hear you, but I hear too much, like traffic or a train or lots of people. It's lots of loud sounds. Uh, okay, teacher, I understand. I'm sorry. That's okay. What's going on over there? What 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 is happening? I I have I have problem with my microphone. Ah, okay. All right. Well, my question to you was: Are there words here in what uh, Alfredo read that you do not know or would like one of us to explain better? Uh, for example, do you know what debate is? What debate means? Harnan, I think your micro. Do you know what it. Do you have a question about any of these words? I'll take that as a no. Um, by the way, for Khan, your definition of evaluate is incorrect. Okay. I was going to make a definition. <laughs> Well, I'm looking at it on the side and does not mean an estimate is, is an educated guess. An evaluation is a conclusion based on existing data. It may not be 100% accurate, but it is much, much, much more um, accurate than an estimate. An wow. estimate is just a guess. An evaluation yeah. is a full review of things. Okay? You no, know, Mustafa was discussing about that. I was just looking at it. Uh, you know, that's what a class is for, and that's what the classroom is. I just have to jump in every once in a while. Okay. I have a question. What yes, is certainly. Chirp? Um, chirp. 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 It's a sound a bird makes. Like, chirp, 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 chirp. Like, oh. Yeah, something like that. It's a little but bit crisper. Like it's, it's sweet, sweet or... It's like Westel. Go ahead, Mustafa. Uh, Westel, it's... <laughs> That's a chirp. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kevin, uh, what, what is it, mammal? A mammal is an animal that has fur and whose females produce milk for their offspring. Mm -hmm. uh, you're thinking of things like uh, cows and cats and platypus and, um, oh, Lord, uh, anything, you know, echidnas, just your general uh, animals that we're used to. They have the fur, they have the backbones. Most of the babies are born internally and the mothers make milk. Those are mammals. You and I are mammals. Uh, apes are mammals, monkeys, um, lemurs, uh, cats, uh, different animals, beavers. Um, those are all mammals. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay. Or not. Um, I'm going to read this paragraph, then I'm going to ask you to read it, okay? Do you understand? See, si, yeah, okay, teacher. Okay, here we go. Um, mute yourself for good. David and Anne Premack, Premack taught their chimp Sarah to communicate by placing differently shaped chips, each symbolizing a word on a magnetic board. Lana a chimpanzee studied by Duane Rumba learned to follow instructions to communicate by pressing keys on a specifically designed computer. American Sign Language, the hand gesture language used by deaf people, has been used by Beatrice and Alan Gardner 
with the Chimp Washoe, and by Herman Terence with Nim Chimsky, good name, and Kanzi, a bonobo, commonly known as a pygmy chimpanzee, studied by Sue Savage Rumba, learned to recognize spoken words and communicate both by gesturing and pressing word symbol keys on a computer that would speak for him. Okay. Your turn, Hernan. Okay. Uh, Davy and Prima talk to uh, Sarah to, to communicate by placing differently shaped chips, each uh, symbolizing a word on a magic board. A magnetic board. Go on. Communicate by pressing caves on a specially designed computers. American Sign Language, the Han Hesu language used uh, by the people has been used uh, by Bernice and Allen Gardner with the team uh, was and by Herbert uh, Kuros with Nye Chemsky and Kemsky. A bo bonobo. A, 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 excuse me? A bonobo. Bemobo. Bemobo. Okay? Oh, no. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, no, as a, a pygmy. Pygmy chim chimpanzees story uh, by Sue Savage uh, Rombouch uh, in uh, 1990 uh, 1993. Uh, learning nor uh, re recognized spoken words and to communicate uh, by both history and raising one simple case on a computer in chat uh, would uh, speak for him. A story is okay. Okay, stop there. Stop there. Now, tell me what this paragraph says. Repeat, teacher, please. What does this paragraph say? Now that you've read it, and I've read it, what is the meaning of the paragraph? Per paragraph. Yeah, let's go right here. Uh, these are all. Okay, let's let's. I'm just going to say, okay. What this is talking. What else am I getting? I'm getting something from somebody. Okay, what this paragraph is saying is that. These various people, Premack and Rumba and all these different scientists, studied animals trying to teach them how to communicate. And they taught them in different ways. Some just put words on a board. Some uh, had taught them um, sign language, which would be, you know, when you have your symbols like that and hello and all that. Um, to try and get the animal to communicate since they can't speak. They don't have vocal cords. Um, anyway, that's what they were trying to do. Now, uh, Hernan, do you have any questions about any of these words? Hernan? Yeah, teacher, tell me. Yes. Do you have questions about any of these words? Okay. I, I, I don't can see it rough. Okay. I, I'll tell you what, Hernan, I'm really sorry, but there's just too much noise. Um, stay in the classroom and, and ask if you have a question, but please go ahead and mute yourself when you're not talking because it's just too loud and, and we cannot hear you or each other. Is that okay? Hernan, there's problems with your microphone. Okay. Uh, teacher, I, I, I have interference in, in my in, in my computer. Okay. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Um, I, I'm going to have to. Can you mute? Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, for Khan. Let's go ahead yes. and go down to this. Do you have any questions or any comments about this last paragraph? No. Okay. Uh, yes. No, no. It's just background noise. The, just background noise. Okay. Everybody. Questions from anyone? Okay. All right. For Khan, uh, this next paragraph, please, beginning with, uh, oops, 
Sorry. Okay. Studies of these animals suggested that they, they could spontaneously manipulate combinations of words to refer to things that were not present. Was she, Lena, Sarah, Nim, and Kanzi all mastered between 130 and 500 words. Their vocabulary included names for concrete objects such as apple or me, verbs such as tickle and eat, adjectives such as happy and big, and adverbs such as again. The animals incorporated the words into sentences expressing wishes such as you tickle me or if Sarah good then apple. Sometimes the sentences refer to things in the past. Finally, all these animals seem to enjoy their communication devices and use them spontaneously to interact and form mutual bonds with their caretakers. Okay, Farkhan, you've read it. What, uh, what do you think it's about? Uh, it's about their vocabulary and how do they use the language. Okay. Could they use the language? Yes, kind of. Yes, kind of. Why do you say kind of? Because their vocabulary is limited with 500 words. Yeah, that really isn't many. Um, okay. Words. Any words in here you would like clarified that you may not understand adequately? Mm, I guess not. Okay. What does it mean to manipulate? Uh, trying to change something in a specific way, maybe. Okay. Well, it's not just change. Um, Manipulate is to, to use. If I have a um, like, my like kazoo. You shall use something. Yes, I'm sorry? Yes, like using something in, in like experience when using something. Not really. Um, in this context, where they're talking about, um, well, let me go back here. I am moving this around. And I might have this instrument and this instrument, okay? But this one's kind of stupid, so I'll put it here first and play the important one. I am manipulating them to put them the way I want. Words you manipulate by moving them around in a sentence. So, for example, um, what's her name? Uh, Sarah, for example, said, if Sarah good, okay, she's got the conditional in there, then Apple meaning maybe she wants an apple if she's good. She's used the words to do something. That's what manipulate would mean. Okay? Any, anybody else? Any other questions or thoughts? Manel, anything? So how do they no. say that or say or write or draw? Well, remember what they said up here. Uh, some of them had words on a magnetic board. So what, what you had was mm, yeah. words that were written down and they, they moved the words around, physically moved them. A, a true literal manipulation. Uh, others learned sign language. They learned to move their, their, paw, their hands to create words with their hands and communicate that way. Okay. Uh, and some pressed keys on a keyboard on a computer and used the words that way. Okay, uh, so they, they did some things. Um, Manel, did you have a question? No, I no? didn't. No, no. Okay. Um, incorporated. Who can tell me what incorporated means? Put into the real word. Not put into. No, bring to. To, to put together. Put together, yes. So they made it part of, um, part of the body of a sentence. So they joined the words and they created, they made a sentence. That's what incorporation is. Mm -hmm. okay? I can use it like in business, incorporate company. Yes, it's the same idea. You, you take a company that is just a proprietorship. Somebody owns it under his own name and you make it into something else, a corporation. So it's not that person anymore. That's what corporate uh, theory and corporate law is. Yes, a legal construct. All right, anybody else? OK, you're also smart. Let's go <laughs> to, um, but the smarter people are the ones who ask questions. What's a mutual bond? 
and that's redundant, by the way. It's bugs, like, and what do somebody specific? Oh, it it, it yeah. means. I'm sorry. No, the question is to anybody or somebody specific. Yeah, what what uh, uh, just whoever feels like answering. I, I said the material bonds is like a material uh, relation. Yeah, a relationship in this relationship. case, mm -hmm. an emotional relationship, not just a um, uh, a caretaker one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Manel, do uh, this next paragraph. It's rather mm -hmm. short, but there's a lot in it. Okay. Many of the uh, preliminary conclusions about prim primate language learning were challenged by Herbert uh, Thuris and his uh, colleagues in their investigation of NIM. Uh, Thuris no noted many subtle characteristics of NIM's communication that seem incompatible with incompatible, incompatible, incompatible with the child's use of language. And he argued that animals in other studies do not show the same characteristics. Okay. okay. Tell me, if you would, Manel, what, what does that paragraph mean? Okay, uh, just a minute. Sure, take a look. Uh, is it about the... the, the I mean, this uh, scientist said that the the characteristics of a uh, of a chimpanzee communication is similar to charts. Well, they said it's different. Um, In other words, the preliminary conclusions, what they first came up with, mm -hmm. are what they talked about above. Hmm, she's putting words together. Maybe she's communicating. Okay, mm -hmm. but Terence yeah. is saying. Wait a minute. <laughs> they might be using words, but not the way that a child who is learning language uses them. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was Nin specifically. And then uh, the other studies, he says, are the same. Um, OK, go ahead. And uh, what words do would you like explained or, or clarified? Uh, words? Yeah, from what you've uh, read. Subtle. I'm sorry? Uh, subtle. Subtle. Okay, let me find that. Yeah, it's it's actually pronounced S U T T L E, okay. um, and it means small or hard to detect. Um, in other words, in this case, there's just real little things that he noticed that don't add up. It doesn't seem right. So it's subtle. It's hard to see. Uh, it's very quiet. Um, ah. Here's an example, and I'll use a food example. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, is there any kind of food that you like to eat that has spices? I mean, like curry or, or chili powder or anything like that. A spicy food. Not very spicy. Just normal soup. Okay. Well, when you make something spicy, mm -hmm. it's hot. But yes. if you put less and less and less and less and less in, mm -hmm. means less heat. Yes. Uh -huh. um, the if you just know it's there, but it's not very strong. It's just there. It's subtle. It's a hint. Okay. Uh, so a subtle is a hint. Does okay. that help you? Yes, of course. Okay. You. You're welcome. Uh, anything else? Um, in uh, income. Incompatible. Incompatible. Yes. Okay. Not consistent with. In other words, uh, let's see. Okay. You know that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no. I just uh, I just knew another word for compatible. Compatibility. Yeah. There, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. 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 Yes. If you're compatible, you get along. <laughs> yeah. And a couple that's compatible is one that's probably going to be together for a while. Uh -huh. um, and I was going to make an ex-wife joke, but I won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I was married, I didn't like them, so I probably shouldn't like them now. Anyway. <laughs> uh, 
Anything else? No, that's all. Awesome. Okay. Let's move around. Uh, Monica, how about you? Uh, no. I good? think I understand everything. All right. What's a colleague? A colleague. Uh, a colleague. Um, colleague. I think it's uh, a person who works with him. Yes. Yes, exactly. So my fellow teachers and I at Kalingo are all colleagues. And sometimes I get English teachers in these classes, and I consider them colleagues as well. Okay. Very good. Mustafa, how about you? No, I think I can't see paragraph very good, but I hear my not, and it's okay for me. All right. Servette? No. Okay. Alfredo? No, fine, fine, fine. Okay. Today we are very smart. Today we are very, we are very smart today. <laughs> well, I think smart people ask lots of questions. So, <laughs> so you tell me if you're smart. Uh, and Manel is here twice, so she's twice as smart. <laughs> Gadi, how about you? Gadi? Oh, no, it's okay. It's Got okay. It? All right. Hernan? Telling you. I'm sorry? Okay. Monica. Uh, Monica. Let's see. This is a very long one. So what I want you to do to read is down to the word do. Can you see that? Uh, no word. Can you see the screen where the words? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. The, the part I have highlighted in blue. Okay? Okay. Uh, first, Tara said, uh, the format of their sentences uh, was always relatively simple as verbs. Name could use isolated gestures of, or could combine two or three gestures, but the term never used strings of words or clues that conveyed, con, conveyed, conveyed, yes, conveyed more sophisticated or abstract messages. Second, Torres cited the animal's lack of spontaneity, creative creativity and expanding co co complexity, complexity yeah. adaptation which are ca characteristics of children's language. Many of the animal sentences were requests for food, tacklings, baths, pets, and other pleasurable, pleas pleasurable objects and experiences. Other researchers pointed out, pointed out that Sims do not inevitably associate seeing objects with her words as human infants do. Okay. There's a lot in there. Let me, um, I'm going to read it again and let you track it and then you can tell me what that section means and we'll clarify words if, if you like. Okay. First, Terrace said, the format of their sentences was always relatively simple and brief. Nim could use isolated gestures or could combine two or three gestures, but the chimp never used strings of words or clauses that conveyed more sophisticated or abstract messages. Second, Terence cited the animal's lack of spontaneity, creativity, and expanding complexity and adaptation, which are characteristic of children's language. Many of the animal's sentences were requests for food, tickling, baths, pets, and other pleasurable objects and experiences. Other researchers pointed out that chimps do not inherently associate seen objects with heard words as human infants do. Okay, tell me, what, what is happening? What, what does this paragraph say? I, I, uh, there are some things I, that I, under, I don't understand. Okay, I, well, I, let's start with that. Let's go with the things you don't understand. That might help. Mm, okay. Um, let's see what, the brief? Brief. Short. Short. In other words, when you looked up at the sentence um, up here, let me scroll up, where it said, uh, you tickle me, that's way too short. <laughs> that's brief. Uh, or then apple, very short. It communicates the idea, kind of. So that's, that's what is brief. Okay? 
All right. Uh, okay, I guess that uh, the text is about uh, that the animals um, try to express their themselves uh, by, with simple phrases and try to express uh, what they want, ex like babies, um, I want water, or something like that. Not complex sentences. And then what is the difference between what babies do and what these animals do, ultimately? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what he's saying is that, well, babies and little children, once they get the idea that language means something, pick it up very quickly. Um, someone will say, hold up a ball, and they'll say, do you want a ball? And the child knows very quickly that the word ball and that thing are the same and knows to ask for it with words. Um, or, do you want a drink? And they can not only say, I want a drink, but I want a warm drink or a cold drink. Think about the way you study English. When you first studied English, you only knew a few words and phrases. That's how a lot of people start. But over time, you start putting different words together and they become more complex and you don't even realize it's happening until you look back and you say oh yeah <laughs> you don't even realize it but you as a language learner become more and more at ease with the language just by use no animal can do that and that's what he's saying um, okay so you said that uh, mm, the baby it's faster thinking or or they can improve yeah. faster the languages but yeah. the, the animals can't they cannot can't. right okay. uh, these clauses groups of words are more sophisticated they indicate thinking at a much higher level an abstract is thinking of ideas as opposed to things okay okay but it's more or less what I said. So yes. they are like babies, but and they are always in the same level. Right. They're, they're not even as, and they stay babies. And I think that's what you were saying. Um, mm -hmm. They start out as babies, they stay babies. And Terrace was saying, that's right. <laughs> so they, they don't learn language like we do. They don't improve their language. Exactly. Yes, very good. All right, we are running out of time. Uh, Mustafa, do the last part of this paragraph, okay? Okay. Uh, finally, Teres questioned whether experimental base influenced the report of the chimps' communications. Consequently, or not, experimenters who conclude that chimps learn language. Uh, might oh. tend to ignore. Yeah, but I can't see. No. Oh, you can't see. Um, no. Let me see if I can bring it just a little bit bigger. Can that? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Better. All right. Okay. Uh, might tend to ignore uh, strings that viol uh, violate 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 violate. Violate. Uh, violate, violate, yes. Violate grammatical order or to mm, reinterpret. Say, say. No, it's it, I can't. I can't see. It's I think it's my connection. Okay, I, I'll read it and and we'll wrap up. Um, unless uh, I'll tell you what, I'd rather Servette. Can you read it, please? Yeah. Finally, Terrence questions whether experimental bias influenced the reports of the chimps' communications. Consciously or not, experiments who conclude that chimps learn language might tend to ignore strings that violate grammatical order or to interpret ambiguous strings so that they make grammatical sense. For example, if Nim sees someone holding a banana or signs, Nim banana, the experimenter might assume the word order is correct and means Nim most banana, rather than that banana belongs to Nim, in which case the word order would be inaccurate. Okay. In, in just a few words, what is this guy suggesting as a final idea? 
It means that they use language, but it's not in order. They just put, uh, push the words. So it can be anything else by using these words, the same words you can say, I want banana or banana is big or banana belong to Neem or something different. So they use, they can't usually manipulate the language, I think. They just, yes. I and think they just okay. learn the, if I press that button, they will bring me banana. If I press that button, I, they will tickle me or something. They just. Okay, that that's one of the accusations. But what does Tara say? He's saying, okay. yes. I think Terence is saying that investigator uh, found that they want to find. Exactly. Exactly. They find it because they want to find it. Um, and that's a big thing. They may not even realize they're doing it. So uh, they say, okay, we taught him sign, but an animal can pick up on gestures and on ideas um, without being that complex. Uh, I, I might say to my dog, go get your ball, and the dog knows what I'm talking about. But they know more by symbols and voice intonation than by the words. Because I usually say, get your ball. But if I say, get your ball, the dog has no idea what I'm talking about. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's what Terrence is saying. It's, as Alfredo interpreted it, the... Animals communicate by words because the experimenters want to say <laughs> they communicate by words, whether they do. Or not. Like, yes. Like connecting action with uh, visual memories or some movement. Yes, 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 very much, yes. Okay, we don't have, so you don't laugh and you don't scream because your brain already knows what you want to do. What in the name of heaven? Can you tickle yourself? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is going on over there? <laughs> I think I'm in the wrong class. I, I, I feel like those teachers who, who, who have given the students a writing assignment and the books are propped up and, and instead of doing the assignment, they're passing notes. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, you are sharing the notes with the rest of the class. <laughs> Is it possible to tickle yourself? Um, actually, I don't agree because what makes something funny is that it's unexpected. Um, and if you expect to be tickled you can't by yourself, you can't possibly be tickled by yourself. Just It's logically inconsistent. Why did I say that? Um, <laughs> you guys are bad influence on me. Okay, just just a few minutes left. Uh, any questions for me? Yeah, I have about, a question. And, yes, for Khan. What happened to your exercise machine? I can see a box cross uh, cross cut. What what you're looking? Yeah, um, I didn't I didn't destroy that. I did get a paper shredder uh, because we've gotten piles of paper and bills and all that. So we shred them up. The other thing is my wall calendar, which I have um, all, all my appointments because i got so much going on, I need to keep track of it. And my friend Amy wants to know what I'm doing too so she can see what I'm doing when look, she's looking at the wall. Okay? What is isolated gesture, gestures? Isolated gestures are gestures that take place by themselves. If I just do that, well, that's an isolated gesture. It doesn't mean anything. So what the experimenters are saying is he's just doing this and this and this and this, but doesn't really know what they mean. In other words, how many times was he doing this before he got the combination right to say, I love you? <laughs> you, know, you know, it's the old joke about 100 monkeys. You know, if you stick a hundred monkeys down with word processors in a hundred years, they'd write a book. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, because I don't have a hundred monkeys or a hundred years. <laughs> Maybe they can tickle themselves. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that was funny because it was unexpected. <laughs> 
and if this afternoon's class is all about tickling monkeys, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> you guys coming to the composition class? Yeah. That's, that's, that's the one at, uh, what time is it? At uh, one o'clock, yeah. Yeah, and one to one to two. My time. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe they're too busy tickling themselves. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, this class is to 